Ark of Alchemist is a bizarre game. It's a product of Compile Heart's Galapagos RPG project, the project which so far has pushed Compile Heart to new levels of quality with great games like Death End Request and Dragon Star Vanir. And then we come to this. Ark of Alchemist is a big step backward in terms of scope, execution, and quality. I can see what they were trying to do in places, there are some interesting ideas, and it's not strictly a bad game, but it feels old, and not in a nostalgic good way. So what is Ark of Alchemist first and foremost? Well, it appears to be an action RPG of sorts, but with big asterisks next to both action and RPG. It's like the bare minimum of both those categories. The action combat is real time and little more than pressing one of two buttons, occasionally pressing a third button to use a special attack once you've built up the special meter. This western version of the game, even on PS4 as I've been playing here, is the enhanced version only recently released on the Switch in Japan. This version added more playable characters. I'm not sure which characters are the new added ones, but for a large majority of the characters in general, I'd say why bother making them playable at all? One of the characters I chose to control at one point could only do a single hit move, a single hit move that didn't string together into a combo, and the only other thing she could do was sit there to create a shield and do nothing else at the same time. Just sit there, immobile. It's extremely engaging. Maybe the combat gets expanded later on, but I've played for over half the game now and that's pretty much what combat boils down to. Your character can do two things. The default one you're in control of has a melee combo and a ranged attack. The healer is very much like the tank in that she has one crappy attack or she can create a healing circle. Now, it is possible for base level hack and slash gameplay to provide some level of fun, but Ark of Alchemist also has problems. It has problems with input lag, dropped inputs, and a focused target system that only seems to work 50% of the time. Perhaps I was selling it a bit short earlier when I insinuated it was the bare minimum of an RPG, because there is a story here, and the writing isn't half bad, but the gameplay, again, is where it falls short. The game opens up with a decent story building cutscene. You then move straight into another cutscene and get a sense of the group dynamic of all these characters, but then you're essentially dropped into a map with very little to go on other than event markers. Again, marking your next destination on a map is fine, but the execution here is just weird. The second event marker that you need to get to to progress the story is through a small cave that has a level 30 enemy in it. Are you supposed to be able to take down this enemy? Are you supposed to try and run past it? Do you need to go and kill other enemies in other parts of the map first? What happens if I'm low on health or something and I haven't gained enough levels? Well, it doesn't matter what you're thinking at that point, really, because you can kill it. Even though you're only like level 10 and it's level 30. I guess I could have also ran past it, and if I did go and explore the other bits of the map to try and level up, and I ran low on health, I guess I'd eventually figure out I'd have to go back to the beginning where there is a warp stone, which takes you back to the base camp where you can do things like change your party and buy items. It's weird because half the time you think you're being given some kind of guidance, and the rest of the time it's like you've awoken on a desert island with amnesia. Also, every single time I've warped back to the base camp so far, a cutscene has played. They're mostly interactions between a small number of the characters, but it begs the question, are all these cutscenes missable? Like, if I just didn't warp back to base often enough, would I just not see any of these cutscenes? Anyway, on to the positives. I actually really like the art and the character designs. Concept art for this project was done by none other than Yoshitaka Amano. The music is also surprisingly good. There are a few bits of the gameplay that I actually like, too. One of the mechanics the game revolves around is elemental orbs that you equip. They can be used in both combat and exploration. For example, the fire orb you start with unleashes a fireball attack that damages enemies in combat, or it can be used to light lanterns in dark caves. The earth orb you unlock next can create pillars you can take cover behind or jump on to reach new parts of the map. The other gameplay element I like, I like more in concept than I do in execution. Pretty early on you'll unlock the ability to expand your base camp, making it larger, adding and upgrading facilities, and so on. Placement of your facilities has a strategic element. Placing certain facilities next to each other or in a particular formation can grant bonuses, but it's just all round extremely basic. I'd have loved to see this expanded and made a more worthwhile part of the game. 
which is mostly a good way to sum up Ark of Alchemist as a whole. I'd love to see what this game could be if it were expanded and more time and effort were put into it. All the foundations and building blocks are here, but that's about all that's here. It's a shame this one just isn't on the level of Compile Heart's other recent projects. Hopefully they get back on track and nail Death End Request 2. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.